Hey folks, today I'm going to show you how to add Firebase dynamic links to your Flutterflow app. So as you know, Flutterflow recently added support for deep links inside of your project. This allows you to send people links to specific pages inside of your application. However, there are some limitations. So the URLs generated for this are not your typical HTTPS. It's typically some unique prefix that you set, which can often make the URL look a bit strange. Most importantly, if you send someone a link and they haven't installed the app, it'll simply do nothing. Firebase dynamic links solve all of these problems. It'll generate a normal looking link to any page inside of your application and also send users to the App Store or Play Store if they don't already have it installed. And luckily, it's really easy to set up in Firebase and Flutterflow. So to get started, go to your Firebase dashboard and go down to Dynamic Links. Hit Get Started. It is possible to use your own custom domain with some additional work, but the easiest way is to use this Google provided domain that will automatically exist for your project. So select that one, hit continue. Good, it's been verified, easy enough, and finish. So the first step is done, easy as that. Then there's a few more steps for iOS specifically that we need to take care of. So go to project overview, click on your iOS configuration, which you should have already created. And at the bottom, you can see your app configurations. Make sure to click on iOS and note this app store ID and team ID. And you can find both of these in the developer console. Of course, if you've already deployed, then you know where these live. So make sure to fill these out. And then finally, there's one more step in the developer console. You have to go to certificates, identifiers, and profiles. Go into identifiers, click on the identifier of your choice for your application, and then make sure that associated domains capability is selected. Finally, we'll hit save, confirm, and we're good to go. So that's all there is to it on the setup side. And configuring it in Flutterflow is equally easy. So we'll go here to our project in Flutterflow, go to settings, app details. Um, first, we'll have to enable deep linking in the first place because of course, dynamic linking won't work without deep linking. And then we'll check use Firebase dynamic links to true. And now we just need to add our URL scheme. For that, we go back to the Firebase console, scroll down to dynamic links, and then note our dynamic link URL here. I don't know why I can't copy paste it, but I'll have to type it in manually. Ours is fluttermat.page.link. And simple as that. We're ready to rock and roll. You can now send links to users on both Android and iOS with the same link. And if they don't have it installed, it'll send them to the App Store or Play Store. One small difference between using Firebase dynamic links and vanilla deep linking is how you actually generate the links to your page. With just deep linking, normally you would go to some page, click share, and imagine you wanted to share your link. You would add a share action whose value is equal to global properties, link to current page. And that's because it's a simple function just to get the link to the page. With Firebase dynamic linking, this link now has to be generated by a backend call, which we handle for you, but it now requires an action to generate the link. So instead of being able to share it directly, all you need to do is go to generate current page link as an action, and then we'll add one more action now to share that link that we just generated from variable, widget state, and current page link. And that's all there is to actually generating the dynamic link. Also, while I've got you here, I wanna show you a couple cool new features that we've added since the original deep linking tutorial. 
So the first is a simple toggle for whether pages require authentication by default. By default, if a user opens a deep link into a specific page in your app and they're not logged in, it'll still allow them to view that page. Of course, you can set for any specific page whether that's the case or not. So for instance, I can mark this page as requiring authentication. But of course, then I'd have to do that for every single page in my app. This toggle allows you to set it by default for all pages, and then you can go in and select which ones you don't want to allow authentication. So now for pages that should not require authentication, I can go in and check those manually. So this gives you the option to require authentication by default or not require authentication by default. The other cool feature we've added is that for pages that do require authentication, imagine they come into the My Collection page and they're not logged in. This will redirect them to the login page. And then once they've signed in, it'll remember the page that they were supposed to go to and go back to the My Collection page. Just a couple of nice little features for you there, thought I'd mention. But back to the topic at hand. I hope this helped you add Firebase Dynamic Links to your app and get those links out to your users. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.